Afternoon YouTube, Dave here. Well, I'm not done by a long shot, but progress has been made. I uh, thought I'd do a little little uh, video. It's been quite a while since I did one. And uh, you can see how my floor, this is what I wanted. You can see through it, it's like you're walking on air. I'm uh, actually have five sheets of four by eight expanded metal up here, and uh, they're they're finished. Got the toe plate, the verticals. I'm uh, thinking about using chain as the top of the handrail, along with uh, some cable, but. Uh, I'm just making a little update. These are the little scrolls I'm making. <laughs> Those are uh, 40 inches long. And to do one section, which is one 4x8 sheet of expanded metal, it takes 48 of those. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Oh no, I misspoke. That's for two sections. So it actually only takes 24 for each one. And what it was, I, I was doing uh, two sections at a time. So I got another section here ready to go. But I just put my uh, uh, two inch tubing in because um, I'm gonna have to get the uh, uh, I-beam for the gantry crane put up here. The piece I have, actually heavier than I want but uh, anybody building out there anything out there nowadays know that metal has uh, the price of metal went through the, the ceiling I mean it is that piece of two inch uh, tubing right there eighth inch wall when I built my other trailer over there I was paying $37 a stick that's a 20 foot stick and the last time I went down it's up to $116 a stick and the truth is I got about 400 feet in that trailer and I'm, I'm over 400 feet in this one now but we have to uh, get creative and use other uh, means because the uh, price of metal is killing me but what I did you can see down there I don't know if you can see but there's three sheets of uh, expanded metal and I got one, two, three ready to go here I got one set of uh, scrolls all set up for this section. Once I get this one in, then I will uh, I'll do 48 more scrolls, do two more, do two sections at a time. And uh, I decided, you know, uh, spiral staircases are really cool. They look nice, and they're cool. I like uh, curves. And, I mean, these are straight lines that give you a sense of curve. But there is one shortcoming on spiral staircases. <laughs> and anybody who uh, has uh, used one will know. Spiral staircases are a small footprint and uh, don't take up a lot of room. But they're just not <laughs> designed to take anything up or down them. So, what I decided is uh you know i'm putting my jib cranes up here i got this one here i'll put another one on the corner but i i got this now this is a, a harbor freight uh truck uh and it's a jib crane too here's the little top part and i'm sure people have seen these and and it's a good design i mean it's cheap get your little uh uh, hydraulic jack goes in here catches the piece coming off so you can jack it up plus it's got the uh, cable hoist on there which this one's rated at, at about a thousand pounds with it sucked all the way in so what I'm going to do is uh, I guess I'm just using it as a, as a design element because I'm actually gonna uh, use this as a 
three and a half inch Sked 40 and three inch Schedule 40 fits in it with 50,000, 60,000 clearance, which makes for a, a nice bearing surface. Actually, I'll tell you, I uh, checked this one out. And this one, the Harbor Freight one, is actually uh, looser tolerance. It, it, the other pipe I'm gonna use has better tolerance. So what I'm gonna do is on this post right here, up at the top, I will weld in a piece of this three and a half inch Sked 40, and I, I figure I'll do it 18 inches. I have to drop down a foot. You have eight, like an 18 inch uh, bearing surface, and I'll put a, a piece of three inch uh, Sked 40 inside, which would be the strong back for the, uh, the the crane. And what I'm thinking is, since I'm going to have uh, two jib cranes on this side, I'll. Uh, I'll put one here and I'll put one over there and they and they only go up six inches above the deck height because all of, I, all my little uh, stubs that the pockets that hold my uh, handrail up there are all six inches high and at the six inches high you're still a couple inches under 13 feet which will get me under all the bridges uh, generally speaking you know I won't be going through streets that have really short bridges, obviously. But I'll put one of these on each side so that I can put my uh, crane, my little jib crane, up at the top on either side of the trailer. And I'll have the post. This, uh, this stuff's all removable. All the uh, hydraulic jack and everything is on this part here. So I'll get a piece, this is 14 inches, I'll make a piece of uh, three and a half inch Sked 40, 14 inches. I'll weld one of these on the top. That's to catch this piece here. And this one here, Harbor Freight uh, made it. I'm thinking a little thin, this is two and a half inch. And I think I'm gonna go with a 3 16 wall. It's a little heavier than that. Then your two inch goes inside the slide. And I could always go 3 16 wall on that. Make stiffen everything up. Weld these little clamps on there. Put a little uh, crane. Uh, wire rope crane. And uh, that way I could do that on either side without uh, having Harbor Freight stuff on my antique trailer. Because when I go there, all the verticals up there uh they're only inch and a half uh i think the eighth inch wall but still see i got one two three four five six seven eight sixteen that's uh 18 plus uh <laughs> 19 20 21 22 23 24 that's a lot of them so what i think i'll do is i'll bundle them all up and when i go to the shows i'll have them bundled down here on the trailer and I'll be able to take them out put my gantry crane in this is going to be the I-beam for my gantry crane this is a little it, it's heavy didn't want to go that heavy because it is going to be up there to the roof which is really high but put a uh, weight up there I'll give it more leverage to tilt the trailer over but I, uh, I tell you, uh, metal is just outrageous. I got this piece. I'm going with it. It's 18 feet, uh, 18 and a half feet long, which will bring it out here four feet out uh, to the end of the porch. And uh, it'll uh, come in very close, probably... Uh, within a, a foot, a foot and a half of the spiral staircase, which, you know, I could run more, but I think that'll, that'll get my equipment in here. Planning to have the, the lathe right there. But I am making progress. I've uh, got uh, an idea for 
some of my um, uh, for the Sky Lounge. That right there will be a beer holder on the uh, vertical, and that one too. What I did was uh, uh, I put some up there. Now you can see them. It's at the that one's sitting on top of the handrail. Now that little handrail is is a little shorty. I got to add a foot to it, and when I added a foot to it. That one next to it. When you're sitting up there, you gotta reach up for your beer. And that's just not comfortable. So what I did was on these, I actually dropped them down about a foot. So I dropped them a foot lower. Right, that, that's actually perfect. Raise it a foot, it's too high. So we just dropped it back down. You know, comfort's everything. You enjoy yourself. And uh, got some chain. Need a chain for uh, my handrail. The, the tops of those are all uh, pieces. I, I went and found I got enough to do a little over half the trailer. So I found this. This is 40 feet, 42 feet. And uh, this is another 40 feet right here. And between this and and my uh, cable uh, crane or crank crank her down I think we should be safe with the with the tow plate up there and my handrail running every four feet uh, I want people to feel safe because you know you see when you're up there it's like walking on air which which is what I want so I finally uh, uh, bit the bullet because I was really hesitant to get this done here for well, the simple reason is uh, I gotta pull this uh, I-beam up there. I gotta get it up there some way and from doing it underneath once you have, once I have the deck and the uh, ceiling in there's really nothing to hang on to. So right now that's about 12 feet. From the end of there to there is 12 feet. And this thing's uh, eight over 18. I could center it up. I could pull it up there and get it up there. And I uh, uh, wanted to buy some more. But I guess at this point, metals went so high uh, for me to buy a nice small piece of the size I want, which is this right here. This, I think, would be perfect. Now, I'm only running like... Uh, a uh, thousand pounds on this but we're talking we're probably talking to three or four hundred dollar range now to get a piece of that so I got this other one and this this is my uh, trolley the crane trolley I'm gonna use this this is actually a uh, two-ton uh, crane trolley so it should be on a heavier uh, I-beam and I, this this uh, I-beam carry four thousand pounds absolutely no problem at all and and I did uh, get a hold of a, a a chain fall this one right here very old it came out of a machine shop here in beautiful Stockton and uh, I feel this, this is a local piece but, and this is a, a ton and a half so it's, it's actually a 3,000 pounds I don't want to pick up that much but I'll have a, a 3,000 pound chain hoist on a, a 4,000 pound trolley with an I-beam that will actually hold it. Probably won't pick up more than 1,000 pounds ever. And that'll get uh, all that big stuff up out of the way. But um, I am making progress. I got a couple of, uh, a couple of these uh, rosettes made up. I finished well in this one. Got to grind her up a little bit and clean her. The, I found out, uh, now I'm arc welding all this stuff with uh, 6011. If you guys out there uh, used any 6010 or 6011, you'll know that this stuff, a uh, splatter is pretty good. I mean, it makes, makes a bit of a mess. So I made this one and I found out, you know, when you, when you uh, wire weld, I don't have a wire welder, but when you wire weld, uh, hardwire welding really only 
works on clean metal. Generally speaking, new metal. You can clean up old rusty metal, but it doesn't weld good with paint rust or, or contaminants or anything like that. But 6011 will burn through anything, and I really like that. Of course, this is all new material, but uh, when you paint it, I painted all my scrolls first before I will them together because after doing one I found out that the paint acts like a uh, anti-spatter spray <laughs> who would have thought and and I'm getting this cheap paint from um, Walmart a friend of mine told me about it I was using all uh, Rust-Oleum which was like uh, five six dollars a can so getting really expensive like I painted this I like the the brown because it's kind of an earth tone but uh and all they have in this cheap paint is either black or white. But you know what? This stuff is, right now it's $1.38 a can. I can get a case of this for uh, what I could get probably three cans of Rust-Oleum for. So I get 12 of these. Now this is, uh, and I'm going to tell you, I've used quite a bit of this now. I think it's a better paint than the Rust-Oleum. It goes on better. It's a thin paint. It's got a lot of thinner in it, which makes it go on better. But it dries faster. You can actually paint with this stuff and put another coat on uh, five, ten minutes later. Um, now in this weather, it's been really cold lately. But uh, this stuff is uh, this stuff's pretty good, man. I was amazed by it. So my trailer is going to be black. That's about the fifth case of that stuff I've been through. And uh, I'm, uh, I'll tell you what, it was so cold out here. We had a storm come through here and it uh, rained for, uh, I don't know, four or five days, which uh, I live in a drought stricken area. Uh, so that rain was uh we really needed it it washed everything out really good washed me out so i wasn't able to get out here and then it got really cold yesterday it was 44 that's cold to me today they said it was going to be 42 i came out here the sun came out it was 55 degrees i'll tell you it was like oh man this is nice weather so anyway happy uh uh Winter solstice to everybody. I know we we uh, we might have missed it a day, but uh, you guys take it easy. Bye.